Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Atlas is a company that's sometimes been dubbed a modern square for the fact it's become the place in the current industry to get well-budgeted RPG experiences that are equal parts traditional and experimental. It may be best known for its Persona and Shimigami Tensei games, but the company also publishes things a bit more odd from time to time as well, like 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim a game that could be described as a visual novel adventure, but that genre description doesn't do justice to what 13 Sentinels manages to achieve in the end. Whatever you want to call it, VanillaWare's latest work of art is an experience quite unlike anything else on the Switch right now, and we think you really ought to give it a look, and here's why. 13 Sentinels follows an ensemble cast of characters as they fend off an impending alien threat, utilizing the power of advanced mech suits to accomplish their goal. And if that doesn't remind you of Evangelion, uh, then you should go watch Evangelion. The story spans several decades as it follows characters in different eras, all roped into the central conflict for different purposes. Natsuno's story, for example, follows a girl with an obsession for movies about aliens, who discovers something that makes her visions of sci-fi fantasy all the more real. Sekigahara's story, on the other hand, is about an amnesiac boy who wakes up in an alley with impending danger, and his adventure initially follows him trying to put back together his past while evading a group of men in black hot on his tail. Perhaps the most fascinating part of the narrative, though, is how it's conveyed to the player. The story unfolds as more of a mosaic than it does a straight line. Each character's narrative plays out across 10-15 to 15 minute chapters, and you can choose to progress any character's storyline in any order you want. The only exception to this is that doing too many consecutive chapters of one character's story will eventually lead to a lock on that character until you've seen certain events unfold in other storylines. Some characters' stories begin farther along in the timeline than others, and they often jump around decades, making it all but certain that the chapters you completed won't have a ton of direct continuity with the one you're just about to start. It's amazing that the narrative works as well as it does, despite this initially confusing, multi-directional approach to storytelling. New plot twists come at the end of nearly every chapter, yet it never feels like anything is spoiling a development that takes place in another storyline. Rather, each plot twist is giving you yet another piece to the puzzle of the overarching mystery, as you slowly tease out an understanding of what caused the main conflicts and what each character's true motives really are. It's almost certain that any two given players will have experienced this narrative in a completely different order than each other, which makes for some fascinating discussions when talking it through with someone else who has played the game. The main drawback to this multi-directional approach, however, is that it can take quite a while before you finally get what the narrative is actually going for. For the first 10 hours or so, it can be a lot to take in as you're hot potatoed from one narrative to another, and positively bombarded with a slew of new characters, time periods, and incidents, all of which are connected in ways you aren't yet aware of. Just when you feel you've finally found a foothold in the narrative, you're whisked away to another one that's initially completely unrelated. All of this is important exposition to lay the groundwork for what eventually comes later, but it can feel a little overwhelming when you're squinting at a character and trying to remember if they showed up in that one scene from an earlier storyline or if there's someone entirely new. Luckily, the developers knew that it could be a lot to keep track of and included some helpful features to manage this. There's a large analysis segment in the main menu that acts as basically a gigantic archive that collates all the characters and events so far, giving you more detailed entries to read through that update as you encounter new developments. What's more is that there's a timeline which shows exactly when events occurred in relation to each other, and the gap in this slowly becomes filled in over time. While it can be irksome to have to occasionally dive into essentially a reference guide to keep all the details of the narrative straight, we appreciated the forethought that went into making it as easy as possible to understand the story. 
Now you've probably noticed that almost the entirety of this review up to this point has been about the story, and that's because 13 Sentinels is pretty much all built around dialogue. The meat of this game isn't quite a visual novel, but gameplay is more akin to an old point and click adventure. Progressing the narrative is usually as simple as finding the next person you need to talk to or the next thing in the environment you need to examine. Occasionally you'll get a new addition to your word cloud which is sort of a stand in for your character's inner thoughts. And it's here that you can learn a character's feelings on certain people or things. You'll occasionally use it for some light interactivity as well, like giving a key item to a character. However, 13 Sentinels isn't all just dialogue and interactions, as there is a relatively small portion of the overall experience that plays like a more traditional strategy game. In these RTS portions, shown from a top-down citywide perspective, you play as various members from the story as they're piloting the eponymous Sentinel mechs to fight off enemy forces. The goal is usually to either defend a point on the map for a certain amount of time, or to wipe out all opposing enemy forces, and you do this through an interesting stop-and-go system that somewhat mirrors ATB combat from Final Fantasy. Every character has a cooldown until their mech can act, and once their turn comes, all action on screen briefly stops to give you time to plan out the most effective action to take. The Sentinels have different strengths, such as proficiency in taking down flying units or having several effective close range options, and you select from a small pool of actions governed by EP, which is basically mana, to keep you from spamming the most powerful abilities. Each action then affects any enemies within a given zone, which gives you the opportunity to squeeze a little more utility out of each one if you manage to line up your shots just right. New attacks and skills can be bought and loaded into a character's loadout making their mech that much more powerful while giving you something meaningful to work towards as you push through wave after wave of battles. We appreciated this effort to bolster customization among your team, and especially liked that there's a built-in system to keep you from favoring any characters too much. Performance in each battle is then graded based on criteria like how much damage your team took, how much collateral damage happened to the city, or how fast you took down your foes, and this adds up to the rank you receive for that mission. If you succeeded in a battle, this also then feeds into a win streak that lets you bolster your high score by chaining battles together, but at the cost that your team doesn't get the chance to restock and heal between battles. This brings in a nice extra layer to the strategy, as you're not just planning out individual battles, but how many battles then your crew can do before they need to take a breather. These RTS portions act as a nice palate cleanser for when it feels like the story is becoming too much. Although it must be said that the gameplay here clearly isn't the main draw of the experience. The lack of enemy variety and diverse of level design makes battles blend together over time. And even on the harder difficulties, most of the encounters aren't all too challenging to win. Still, it's hard to be bothered by any relative shallowness here, as it's a great way to get a break from the story while still staying engaged in the world. Not only do these battles have some of their own story content to them, but they're also key to unlocking mystery files in the archive to learn some important details about the ongoing mystery. Now, as we've gathered so far, 13 Sentinels may tell a compelling story and have some enjoyable RTS segments, but all of this is boosted to a much higher level by the spectacular presentation. In the storyline segments, each scene is characterized by some impressively detailed hand-drawn backgrounds that have a comfy painterly quality to them. Anyone who's familiar with Odin Sphere, Muramasa the Demon Blade, or even Dragon's Crown will be aware of Vanillaware's trademark style when they see it, and 13 Sentinels doesn't disappoint in this area either. Each screen looks like a piece of concept art in the best way, creating a seamless transition from the artist's pens to the live game. The RTS segments are much more rough around the edges, but in a way that feels intentional, as if you're viewing a battle map through the lens of Sentinel. Streets are outlined with neon blue lines, and enemies are represented by simple voxel designs, while the screen shake effects when you set off a bomb or unload a clip from a machine gun go a long way towards selling the sheer weight of your actions. Plus, there are some impressive particle effects on display when you blow up a legion of foes, sending swarms of embers swirling in all directions. Meanwhile, the sound design is stellar, with every line of dialogue having both an English and Japanese voiceover. 
Each actor brings something unique and memorable to their role with various accents and inflections, while the overall sound quality is pleasingly sharp, which is all the more impressive considering that most of the English audio here was recorded from the voice actors' homes during the pandemic lockdown. It's hard to say which of the English or Japanese cast is definitive for the experience, but whichever way you choose, you're sure to get a consistently high quality performance throughout the whole script. As for the soundtrack itself, there's a nice cinematic feel to the way that the music ebbs and flows with the pace of the narrative in the storyline portions. It'll jump from playful to serious, all at the drop of a hat, perfectly punctuating plot events and lines of dialogue as they're playing out. In the RTS portions, the music then shifts to being much more energetic and electronic to match the intense and desperate vibe that most fights have. This is the kind of soundtrack that you'll be searching through YouTube for playlists for after you're done with it. We'd certainly recommend you play with headphones in portable mode if you can. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is a wonderful achievement for dynamic storytelling, as it puts forth a compelling and multifaceted narrative that'll keep you guessing right up until the very end. This excellent story combined with enjoyable combat portions, a striking and memorable art style, and some top-notch voice acting make for an experience that you won't want to miss out on. It's the kind of game that'll have you wishing that you could play it again for the very first time, just so all of its best elements could feel new once again. We'd give 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim a strong recommendation to anyone who has even a passing interest in visual novels. Even if that doesn't describe you, we'd still say give it a shot. You might just be surprised at how well it grabs you. We here at Nintendo Life give 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. Now, if you're still here and happen to want the opinions of someone else who's played 13 Sentinels, I, Zeon, happen to have a few thoughts about 13 Sentinels myself as well that I would love to spew at you, if you still have time. Now, I've expressed this before on the channel, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, but I own a, I've owned 13 Sentinels on PlayStation 4 for a few years now, and whenever I've looked at this game, it just doesn't really, it didn't really seem like the kind of thing that I wanted to be glued to my TV for. I think narrative-driven games are very easily, for me, are very easily digestible in handheld form. Uh, just being able to, like, take that same exact game, you know, anywhere that you are. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, visual novels don't drain as much battery life as something like Breath of the Wild. So being able to play a game like this on the go uh, is is a huge boon to just my my life in general. Like, just being able, being able to play a game like this anywhere is a huge deal for me. Now, unfortunately, one of my sins in life is the fact that I've never beaten Dragon's Crown, Odin Sphere, Muramasa, or Princess Crown, and of the other games from Vanillaware, and I own all of them, and I've dabbled with all of them but Dragon's Crown. I've never played that one, but uh, I but I've loved like the art style and the character designs, and so you know this game has been on my list for a very long time, and I haven't really looked into it enough. But now that I've gotten to go hands on with the game and really understand it. I can see why everyone was singing its praises when it first launched on PS4. I think the narrative is incredibly special. Uh, oftentimes, like for me, Octopath Traveler, I really liked the art style of that game, but it just felt like it was too daunting of a task, I think, to try and manage all these different characters throughout the game. And I think the way that 13 Sentinels kind of has you bouncing back between the different characters, it doesn't feel as bad because also their chapters, uh, like Mitch, stated in the review are fairly short you can you can blitz through them in 10 or 15 minutes and once you get through the t tutorial mode of the game you don't really even have to do much of the the strategy elements if you don't want to now i, I spoke with uh, one of my friends zach i spoke with him the other day about the game and he was actually telling me that he's been playing it on playstation 4 and he really enjoys the strategy elements of the game so you know even though mitch said and you know i'll say it too that i think the strategy portions are the weakest part of the game i think for some people there's still you can find a lot of enjoyment in those as well but for me like i just personally want to like kick back and listen to these the the dialogue and read it and and walk around this world and kind of like pretend that I'm living in this like 1980s version of Japan where there where people are still using VHSs and and buying CDs which I mean I guess people in Japan still buy CDs as well but it's just I think they did a great job of allowing the the player to kind of feel like they're living in this world 
And so if, you know, if any of the, the points that we talked about in this review or even, you know, here at the end here as well, if anything sounds like it's up your alley, definitely don't, don't let this game slip past you. The last thing now that I remember it as well that I wanted to mention is just how genuinely beautiful and breathtaking and atmospheric the environments are and the sound design. The voiceovers for all of the characters are incredible. They have some really classic anime actors in here as well. Like there were a few that I recognized from potentially the Clannad English dub that I watched back in the day, which I mean, I guess I watched a few episodes recently, but I think, you know, for, for anyone who, who still watches anime and, you know, plays a lot of Japanese games, I think you might you might notice some um, some familiar voice actors in this dub as well. I, I should pull up the names and find out who they are, but uh, but I'll just let you find out that for yourself because I think that that's part of the fun too. But it just helps make this whole experience really feel like an anime that you are a part of, and I, I love it to bits. But of course, let us know in the comments down below if you've ever played 13 Sentinels, if you're going to give this game a go. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you go ahead and pretend that subscribe button is, is actually the button that, that will allow you to get in your own Sentinel of your own and save the world. And just tap it and close your eyes and and look at that, We're, we are inside of a Sentinel. <laughs> And of course, don't forget to ring the notification bell while you're inside of your mech because it'll let you know whenever we put up a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zeon from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, get in the robot, and we will see you all next time. Bye.